Hi right, guys, we're back with another episode, and hopefully my signal, unless I took me all this time to get a signal. Uh, which, if I'm not on Wi-Fi, I should be able to have data, but that doesn't seem to work either, so. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna work on the dumbbells, because I do, I think you can, I think you could teach one to go straight away and come straight, but I think they can learn it somewhat. I mean, you should at least try, you know. So, I've got my footstool, which I think helps, and she seems to understand it's just, she can be that close to me though and not see on me or she's gonna fall into the death. Um, I mean, you can see how it helps her. Alright, so I'm just going to try doing the video silent, because, you know, that's how she sees it. Alright, so she's way over there. Let me do my recall. There's my pager. Alright, so now I have to help her understand the baskets there. Because she did, she would have bumped into it on the way in. Alright, I'm just going to try the hands pointed thing.
that's it. The basket part gets me every time. The basket part gets me. Anyway, so I don't know. I mean, I think it just, I think I see now where you can use a pager for a recall with a blind dog. I, I think you would have to. I mean, it's obviously going to have, I think you'd have to put the asterisk by it, you know, with restrictions. But I think if you had a blind dog in your yard and you built a platform, because she was trying to get out or do something the other day, and I did. I used it on practical application to get her back up here. Somebody was coming or something. One of those deals where if she would have gotten out, it would have been awful. All right, look, I could do the recall, though. Let me get my footstool out of the way. She does seem to miss it a lot of the time. You know, if you said, what is she doing? Well, she goes out there and she circles around to see if she can somehow get down to the pond. You know, I think if I just left the gate open, I mean, that's how they'd live their lives. I mean, I want you guys to understand that they'd go down there, they'd get in some kind of cycle and they would all go down there and hang out. And then they'd come back and, you know, look for food and go back down there. That, you know, they would do that every day for the rest of their life and be perfectly happy. All uh, right, so here's my pager, and this is Greg's pager-only collar. And the antenna's chewed, but I think I'm going to get a signal. So she's way over there by the gate. There's my pager. Here she comes. She's running. And she knows she's got a thread through that gate. Sometimes she runs. All uh, right, she slows down. All uh, right, so what I do, as soon as she hits that opening, I add it again. You know, if you said, you know, and I think the high stepping is a good, all right, watch, I can spin her back. I think the, um, the high stepping is just a good indicator. I mean, it just, you know, it's a good cue. And it's, uh, you know, if you said, is that nature or nurture? I would say, I think it's nurture because that was presented to it when it was a puppy. She's ready to do more. You know, she's on a very limited schedule. Some of the stunts she's been pulling. You don't even know. For the footstool again. And I need to find, you know, I do still have that bacon spray. Maybe I should bacon spray that footstool and then she would be able to find it easier. All right, if she goes away, I'm going to spin her back. And I have to say, I mean, you know, if you said, well, how are you generating momentum? I guess just because it has so much of its own. You've seen it. All right, keep your eye on her. She's probably got a default. She's looking back at me. I'm looking over this way. And if you said, how could you practice the psychic recall? Honestly, I think just think the command and then do the pager. All right, watch. <laughs> oh, Mundo. I do. I talk to her all the time. But I probably shouldn't. I don't think any of you should talk to any of them. And Mike, when you're working with that husky, the kind of yay that you need to have is, again, I want you to think of it as just one of your mates and you're playing rugby. You're, you're not that kind of cheerleader. You know what I mean? It's kind of job well done at the end. See how she's threaded back out the gate. I think I figured out too what the jumping in the pond was. Because I went back, I'm going to try to upload it later. Uh, I found that first video where she went swimming, where she had that life jacket on. And I think somehow she thinks jumping in there gets the other ones to do it. And, uh, and it does, it does. If you watch the video from the other day, it was getting the other ones to, you know, to do it. I don't touch her at all, though, you guys. And I think, you know, I think it's condescending and I think it's selfish. And I understand now why all these stores have signs that say, you know, pretty to look at, nice to hold, if you break it, market sold. 
you know, because people can't not touch things. And I, you know, whether it's a, a form of, all right, look, I can page your back. job is only to do that, not pat her on the head or job well done or anything. Even then, I'm kind of, you know, I'm elusive. I'm elusive. You know, I'm, you, I think, you know, I think they've got to think of you as more of a turtle. You're, you're a delicate creature and you can be, you know, driven away, not some kind of, you know, that Mimi of the monkey that's just all over the dog. I mean, if you said, there are a lot of creatures on this earth that want me all over it 24 7. I'd say, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And it is a form of selfishness. I want to touch the dog. I want to do this. And there's men that go out of their way. They'll just sort of knee a dog out of their way. This is their own dog that they live with. I don't want to state any examples, but I, I know a few. Believe me, I've called him on it, too. Uh, you know, it's just relationship damaging. Just relationship damaging. Oh, she's running away. All right, watch. <laughs> ah. So, uh... Yeah, that was good because she actually had a little momentum, but that's what I want you guys to think of with the recall. You know, if you want me to drive directly someplace, you need to show me the route. And then when you tell me you'd need me there, I'll put the gas on and go without even thinking. That was what I didn't think of. Not, they said get there, I'll get there, you know. I know how to get there, you know. That's why I like to go out with Breck when we go somewhere to Orlando to one of these concerts. He knows how to get there. This is the appeal. She's got an expectation of that recall watch. <laughs> oh, okay. And she's got the, and I don't, I just bump it right there at the end. Uh, I don't really add it again. I added it a tiny bit right there, but. Anyway, I think you can already see the episode later is gonna be Crash Goes to the Pond. I'm gonna run through uh, the little cockapoo and, um, Um, Daisy, the new little puppy. Oh yeah, she's gone. You know, and if you said, is your recall, you know, location specific? <laughs> I'd say, oh God, yes, yes, yes. I suppose it doesn't work quite as well if I'm not on my driveway, so. Anyway, hello, Sabari, how are things going? Are they still talking about me in India? What a horrid woman I am. I went on a couple of Rams photos this morning and told him they were awful. I think he removed them. I, you know, I, I don't have any malice when I tell people that, but if the photo looks just awful, I don't think they even realize. Anyway, guys, I'll be right back with uh, the little cockapoo.